Greetings viewers, gazing in upon the back of the green third gen today. Been uh, getting it dressed up a little bit. Finally got some nice fender covers for the back that were some decent carpet. Actually whole decent carpet here for the back uh, that I got out of one. Actually from one that one of my buddies, two of my buddies actually owned and had a bunch of miles on it. But anyway, some pieces of that interior being moved over here. So nicer in the back. I got those limited door panels, which are super nice. I like that. Really coming together. Cracked up nasty dash pad. Finally found one that I can replace it with. Uh, one that's in real... Shape. This one's got glue on it. It's a rough on it. It's all cracked and broke, so I'm going to get to taking that apart. You need a 10 millimeter. You need a screw gun. You're going to need a long shank screwdriver and a pick. This bottom part here has to come out. There's a fastener here. And here on both sides, this just unclips. This unclips. You take this plate off. Here, there's a screw behind it. I'll hit on the high points of where the fasteners are. There's two fasteners under here, two screws on the bottom that hold the glove box on. I've already taken those out. Just set your glove box aside there. There's uh, some tins in here that need to come out this gets this piece out this piece right here just kind of pull in the middle and it folds up it's really thin and flexible right there it's easy to remove you kind of put it back in the same way just kind of squeeze it in the middle and it folds up i'll get to that when we get to that uh, so you take this one out Uh, airbag up in there I'll get to that here in just a minute and we'll go ahead and I'll move over to the other side and start taking some of that apart I hope this is making sense once you get these screws out here and down here that piece kind of pulls forward and out it clips in that black piece that covers the shifters clips into this screws in there there's two little fasteners there that go in those two little things there so it kind of slides back into place and this is just lifts out once you get to that point sorry i'm up too close now i'm gonna take it completely out because uh, it doesn't need to and it's got the shift boots on it but it just clips in and you pull it up ah, let me get over here this. this is all just held on with clips off I forgot to pull that plate first when you pull that plate your AC button comes out like that it's supposed to do that put all those on the floor forgot you just reach in here with your little clip and give a yank it's just held on with some pinch fasteners in the center and on the ends you pull it from the center I usually do from right around this area right here so just reach your hook in there and pull from there, and that pulls that out. Now, there's supposed to be a screw that went right there. That screw is missing in this dash. So I'm hoping the new dash has the right screw place to go. I just put some... Doodle tape there to keep it from rattling. So I'm going to unplug these clips, and then get this out of the way. Okay, you know, take the little light from out beside the lighter on the bottom. There's that little light groove right there. This wire plug here for the lighter. Three clips up here for the flashers, the clock, and the... Whatever the heck button is up there. Oh, the rear defrost button. So you just undo those. This piece here comes off. Uh, if I get the correct... Or if the new, new dash has the right places for the screws, I'll show you where the screws go into that. And then there's fasteners right here, 8 millimeter, uh, to take the radio out. So let me grab my 8 millimeter real quick. And then you just take these four eight millimeters out that hold the radio in. That'll slide out and I'll unplug it. There was two screws, one up here, one over here that hold this temperature control regulator in. Taking those out as well. I'm going to pull the radiator out, radio out and uh, unplug it. And then I'll show you how to get this bottom piece on this side out. And the uh, dash cluster and stuff. So hold on. Real nice to use those plugs from Crutchfield that you wire into your radio 
and then they just plug into your factory speaker plugs. Uh, in this particular instance, I had to remove the amp that was back there. These plugs plugged into the amp, and the old radio plugged in to the amp itself, and for the amp plugged into the radio or whatever. But anyway, these are your factory plugs from Toyota. Just when you order an install kit from Crutch Valve or wherever, and those plugs are super nice. So anyway, it's a too much. About that. There's four tens. That, oh, still got the eight on there. Hang on. There's four tens on this side that have to come out real quick like there's one down here, one up here, one over here, and one right there. Okay. Alright, and then that should just unclip and drop down like so. It's not held on by much. Oh, Hang on, I gotta undo my button here for my clutch start and my ARB plugs here. So hold on just a sec while I undo that. Okay, well, I said my ARB, I don't even have my. Black track is simple. I'm working on how to mix up. Two third gens will do that to you. This was the plug for the clutch start switch. Uh, you actually have to reach into all three of these switch or plugs and push from in those openings to get these units out. So it's a little different than your basic clip. You push down on the tab from inside those slots and those will get open. This I'm gonna leave hooked up. Uh, the hood latch and the fuel door and I got some screws to take out on this piece here and we will get those out there's two up in the top and then there's one down here and one that piece just pulls out too there's the other screw for the black bezel so let me take those two out and those two up there out real quick and then we'll take the bezel out this is where i find the long shank screwdriver comes in handy it's easier at least for me to get in here and get these when i'm not up and they're fighting against that bash bezel trying to get these two screws out so i already got the other two out uh, get this net last one and i'll pull the uh, trim piece and with the tilt wheel in the down position Literally, this just pulls forward from the top and lifts out. Don't forget to unplug your rear diff lock switch. Oops, can't see it. Off the camera. Oh, I touched the middle. Sorry, there it goes. I uh, moved the focus spot. But anyway, take your rear diff lock, uh, unplug it, and your dash light adjuster. Uh, losing my thoughts here. Losing my thoughts. The cluster, four screws also. Just a lot of fasteners. There's two up top here on each side. One on each side. And then these... Okay, and then your cluster pulls forward far enough to undo all the clips off of the back. They're all real easy, just standard push and pull clips. Uh, push the tab, pull them off, let me do that. There's a little screw right here that holds the ductwork to the dash. You take it off of the dash side, not the ductwork side, and that'll release that piece of ductwork. And then on this side, there's another tin right in there. Okay, hold on the floor. Now you see this is just clipped at the base of the windshield now from here on. Uh, I believe yeah, I got everything. I got to go on the other side still and undo the airbag. Okay, there are three more tens in this piece. This is like the top of the box. There's one on this corner. And then there's one that's way up there. Hard to get to and see. I suck at video, and I'm glad you guys stick around and watch what I got to say anyway. Now, this is supposed to have part of your ABS circuitry and your glove box light. Something else plugged in the back of it. Yeah, see there? So you got to take that stuff off too. Okay, well, I hope I edited all that out, but if you saw some fuzz there for just a minute, I accidentally turned my camera on while it was laying on the seat. So I got those two bolts out of the bottom for where the air box was, and now we're down to where it's all just clipped in. So I'm going to try and set this up over the seat, and you can watch me. Fumble fuck around and try to get this thing out in one try. It could be fun to watch. Okay.
Doing. Uh, it's all loose. Everywhere now, it's just literally held on by pins that are at the back of the windshield. So you just kind of grab it where it's a good place and give it a yank. And we'll go to the other side and yank. And you're trying to yank in the video, so don't be telling me. Friends, you watched me yank it in the video. All right, so all those just pulled out. Now, if any of those got stuck in there, I'll show you how to, to, to solve that problem. So fear not if any of the pieces from the dash got stuck in the holders at the windshield because I can show you how to get those out and reuse them. You take it out of this side, everything is unhooked except the airbag. Right, let's go. It has to come out of the dash. Now, on this one, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. Ah, under. Somewhere. Oh, over here on the sides. And uh, I'll have to take those out real quick and then get the airbag out. So it's that easy. Um, just took those other two bolts out. You can unplug the airbag, but I prefer not to jack around with airbags if I don't have to. So I don't want to mess with that plug. I left it plugged in. It comes out of the middle part there. It's not an issue. So if you look around, there's a floorboard full of stuff, airbag and such. Uh, there's a floorboard full of stuff over there and a seat full of stuff here from your dash. I don't know what I got in this right now, about maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, you do need a 12 and an 8 added to that list of stuff. I'm going to go grab something to pull those little plugs that got stuck in those out. If your dash is from a different year, you might want to lay them side by side and make sure that ah, everything it lines up. But uh, mine's one from a 96 to a 97, so I know they're the same. These have a little metal clip on them there that fits into the plastic on your dash. If these get stuck in, you just grab them with a pair of pliers and pull them out. And then you can spread those tines on the sides a little bit and shove them back into the dashboard. I had to do that on the one I'm getting ready to put in. That's pretty easy. They're easy to get out and reuse, so don't fret if one gets stuck. Okay, I got all those out, so my places for my new fasteners are ready to go. I'm going to grab that other dash, bring it over, and uh, get it ready to put in. I'm going to put the thing back up on the seat so you can watch as it goes back in. It's pretty easy. Uh, all goes back together pretty quick from here. Okay. Here I come with the new one, and it just barely come up over the dash here. Ah, let me get it. If I didn't have all the shit in my way, it might be a little bit easier. There we go. I just kind of slide it across. I'm going to go over. There we go, and get those wires out of the other side. Oh, There's fell down in there, but I think from this point it should be okay. It was as hot as anything, so from right from sweating, sorry about that. It's just the way it turned out for me today. Now these go, this goes in the top. Don't forget your wires for your three buttons up here. And I'm gonna go set that side because I can see it. And push it into it. Thingy. Gotta get that center up over there. Okay. Radio. Wires. Wires for the bottom. Make sure all your wires are out where they need to be. The ABS wires are okay there, I think. For the moment. Now go up there. Gotta get the rest of the clips on the other side. So now that it's clipped part way. You can kind of see them. If you look down through the windshield, you can see the clip over here. Uh, here we go. Hey. Huh? I'm going to figure this out. Okay, that was way too much dinking around to show you all of that. I have it in there, and it's secured by the windshield clips. My issue was... So be careful of this. This clip here in the middle is like a guide and it is made to the unit. When I went to push mine in, I bent it over like that. Uh, it got caught on the ductwork. So make sure you have that nice and straight. You can actually get up through the windshield and uh, line up your clips. But I have it all clipped back in. 
I'm going to start putting fasteners back in, get the airbag put back, which I should have done that before I put the dash in. So I'm going to have to take it back out again. Okay, sure enough, did forget the airbag, had to take that whole thing back. back out again. There was a lot of fighting, a lot of fussing, and a whole lot of cursing. Uh, but I got it back in. When you put it in, make sure this white cable goes above the entire airbag because that works your blending door. Your uh, inside outside, right? Yeah, that's the inside outside air. Uh, so make sure that's up on top, that you got this where it goes, that you got these up on top where they go. Your other wires are in place. I clipped this airbag one back up on its thing up here above the glove box. I'm going to start putting some things back together. If there's something that I missed that I need to point out uh, as I go, I'll be sure and do so. So bear with me while I get this back together. Uh, it's just hot as anything. Sitting out here today, so I've been sweating all over everything. Give me a minute to get a break here and get something to drink, and then we'll come out and put this together, and I'll hit on anything I miss taking it apart. Okay, back from my break. It was almost like I was never gone. Uh, so for your cluster wires, make sure you got them on top. Make sure that where that bolt goes, that that lines up. I had to wiggle that around to get that to fit. Um, you got to jiggle it a little bit here and there, but you'll feel it set down and then you'll notice all of the holes, see, like that, starting to line up. Uh, make sure you get, put that back up on top, your diff lock, diff lock and dash light plugs in their respective spots, as well as your clutch start switch, your uh, security system wires. All this will go on after that. These all, like Toyotas and most vehicles, all these wires will only fit one thing. You can label them if it makes you feel good, but they'll only fit. They'll only go where they go. So uh, let me go around the other side. Here. So yeah. How to get those. Uh, I still have to put those two bolts in for the airbag on the bottom. I did have to put that back in. Make sure you put that back in first because I got that all back in and then I had to take it all back out again. Uh, you can tell when you've got it because your reveal across here where you can see the little black bottom of your windshield, it'll all look the same. Uh, this and so you can see it setting down and finding its fasteners. Uh, there's metal framework back there. It's all kind of wiggles and jiggles around. Make sure you don't have any wires trapped anywhere. And you got everything back where it goes. This looks like it's got a little bit of a gap here. But everything is lined up. So I bet when I put that metal brace across the bottom, it'll all line back up. I'm going to go through it and start putting some fasteners and pieces back in. Okay, now I bolted the airbag up. Put those two 12s back in. That bolts it to that crossbar on there. After I did that, the black plastic piece that had the uh, glove box light and those um, wire clips and stuff on it, I put those back and I put that back in. Now this piece here, like I say, it's really flexible and it pops around. It's easy enough to do. I put it in the uh, far right side first. And then just kind of smoosh it up and clip it on where it goes. Pop it in the middle so it pops back out and it goes right into place. Probably couldn't see me do any of that from that angle. Um, make sure your cable here is clipped back in the plastic piece. When you screw the airbag up, it pulled the dash up into place where it goes over here. Uh, lined up. Make sure all your screws are lined up still. You're going to have to jiggle and wiggle some things around, uh, but it's all going back together nice. So after that piece, then we'll put this piece here back on and get the glove box back on. Okay, so it really doesn't matter which side you put together first uh, necessarily. This went right back together just like it was. I put the three bolts in we put those in they have pins they line up on that spread it apart it did give it a nice fit on the edge like it was the box uh, works just like it should and the lever was a little hard to pull prior it's a little hard to pull still so i said it's okay Maybe one day i'll mess with that got the two screws in for the bottom 
uh, down here that hold the glove box in. So everything else that's left here on the floor right now goes in the center and on over. So I'm going to move over there and start putting that together and get the high points. Over there, it's all right. Don't forget, don't forget this nut right here in the middle that goes in behind your cluster. Uh, let me grab my tin. She brought everything over there with me when I went. I made it accessible, but of course, I'll uh, fail on that. It didn't happen. So I have to move that over here. Get to that in a minute. Put on this trap over here on this radio and such. Uh, let's move on. As I tighten, as I tighten these down, I have to wiggle it around, like I say, and make sure that all of the holes are lining up. Anything that needs a fastener put in it, that it's working. And so far, that seems to be working out just fine. I'm using my impact on these. Oh, but it is set on one. So it's on its lowest setting, which is fine for all of this right here. But you wouldn't want to do it if it's not adjustable, I wouldn't think, or use it on a high setting. So anyway, don't forget that. Don't forget to wiggle and jiggle and make sure things are lining up as you go. I'm going to try to put some more pieces in here. Nothing extra special over here. Um, of course, after you tighten that nut in the center down, cluster goes next, four screws. Bezel goes after that, four screws. Don't forget to plug all your switches in. Don't forget to plug your rear diff lock in. Yeah, I'm happy to have a rear diff lock, so uh, I know not everybody likes that, but I really like it. I'll plug your light switch in, plug your clutch cancel in, and your security back in. I left these hooked up. Um, as everything goes together, I kind of eyeball it and make sure that all my duct works fitting and everything. There's a little clip right here that goes under this piece. So as uh, there's a push fit clip here that you pull apart. So before you put your screws in, make sure you got that clip up in there. Uh, it doesn't fit great anyway. It's, I mean, compared to some vehicles, it's fantastic, but I digress. Um, anyway, make sure you get that in. Then put your uh, 10 millimeter fasteners back in and set your ball cooler correctly or your badge cooler, I guess whatever you cool with yours. Uh, I just ripped this off to get to a screw earlier. It just has those little push pieces on it and it just goes right back. Up over there and pushes. It pushes into place, hang on. Okay, that has to go on before this. Uh, brown piece here does, because it clips under the bezel, uh, clips under this and under this both so you put the bezel on then you put this piece on that hides the screws and covers the ignition then the brown piece on the bottom goes on uh i get the order mixed up and uh, waste more time sometimes taking stuff back apart and putting it back together let's move on to the center piece i want to put it together see where that screw goes okay well if confusion hadn't set in yet for me telling you the wrong order to put parts in i'm gonna try to put the rest of this center piece together there's screws that hold your control mechanism in. I put those in. That screw that goes through the dash piece right here goes into this slot right here. Uh, it's actually part of the plastic that is my piece here, but I got a longer screw that I think is going to make it fit. I didn't realize that. I thought it was in the dash. I didn't mess with it before. You put the radio back in. Basically, just plugging everything back in and hoping it all works when I'm done. But uh, I'll get on that. I'll show you that screw when I get to that part. Don't forget to plug all your wires in for the radio, antenna included, your light for the ashtray, your light for the lighter or charge port, whatever you want to call it, and the actual charge port itself. Um, there's that screw that I was telling you about that goes in there that holds this panel. So it's the only screw that goes through it, otherwise it's all just push clips. So I got that all on. This the face plate, that just clips back on, line up there. Do hickeys there. And see, oops. See, you just got to look at the dash while I do all that. Oh, you just line up those things and it goes right in the AC button. It engages when pushed completely in. And then your little handle things, of course they just go on. They're just like they came off. Uh, I'm going to get these other pieces ready and show you how they go back on. Okay, I put all the little buttons back on. You want to run them through and make sure they're working like they're supposed to. And you can hear the doors flapping. Uh, of course, not on that one. These right here kind of go on before this. They 
go between the fastener you can't see uh, between that fastener and this piece behind it cord out of the dang way so these go in behind there and at the same time you got to get them in here the right way did you see that how that slid together now it's, it's kind of a cluster to get them from there but if you just bend it and wiggle it around a little bit you can get it right back down in there it all lines up go do one on the other side i'll tell you i am done with this <laughs> it took more than an hour uh, not a lot more than an hour right now about an hour and 25 minutes and then these are the last couple of pieces right here so put those and those and push it forward so that it all locks in behind the black piece here right here so there it's all locked together now you kind of just push it down in there to where it lines up with the fastener so i'll get my fasteners for up there i'll put this one in back here hang on and so screw one back in there after you fight that around there's a correct plug for this that i don't have so i have to use these ones that i do have to hold that in there and we'll get that on the other side in place get my little whoop, plastic one in there there's the hole there it is and my fastener in here lined up why does everything bite me when I'm trying to show you how to do it? Hold on. I want to tell you when you're frustrated at the end of the project, getting three pieces of plastic to line up so you can get a friggin' screw in there can really be frustrating. This piece goes in front first. And you kind of just push it in at the back. It all clips down. Get the tools out of the way. And viola. Look at that, new dash. Okay, it took more than an hour. I had to fumble around, but even with taking a lunch break and taking the dash out to put the airbag back in and putting a couple things <laughs> together in the wrong order, look how freaking pretty my new dash looks. And it's all in there nice and solid and tight. And we'll clean out the inside and we'll take it for a test drive. And it's going to be awesome, I assure you. So thanks for watching. This is like three hours long a video, but it really did only take me about an hour and a half. So uh, new dash, done. I'm really glad it's done and out of the way. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you skip through some of the dumb shit uh, to get to the end and enjoy my videos. So thanks, and I appreciate you.